Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. Today we will study the derivation of bending stress of an unsymmetrical section using K method. So before starting, we will see what are the assumptions need to consider for an pure bending. The first assumption is that the material of an beam is homogeneous and isotropic. Second comes the value of Young's modulus of an elasticity should be same both in tension as well as for compression. The transverse section which were plain before bending and remains plain after bending also. The bend is initially straight and all longitudinally filaments bends into circular arc with a radius of curvature that is common from the center of an any section. The radius of curvature is large as compared to the dimensions of the cross section. Each layer of the beam is free to expand or contract independent of the layers above and below. These are the few assumptions need to consider when you see the bending. Next comes recall the bending moment equation that is m by i equals to sigma by e equals to y by r. So m comes the moment about any point, i is the second moment of inertia, sigma is a bending stress, e is a Young's modulus, y the point at which you need to locate from the neutral axis, r is a radius of curvature. So we can rewrite this equation bending moment equation in terms of m by i equals to sigma by y equals to e by r. Now here in our this derivation our main motto is to focus on the stress. So we can write the stress as that sigma b equals to m by i by y. Okay. Now consider any arbitrary body placed in an xy plane. Let's assume that the point G as a centroid of any arbitrary body. Assume that along the xy plane the moment acting mx and my respectively. Now to find this bending stress for an any unsymmetrical section it will depend upon the cross sectional shape, size and the moment acting on the section. So it will vary and consider in terms of ixx, iyy and ixy. So considering a small element point p xy of a surface area da as shown in figure. Rewrite the bending stress for an unsymmetrical section. So we can write as sigma b equals to k1x plus k2y. So now consider this equation as equation 1. Now what is k1 and k2? These are the coefficients in terms of moment and the moment of inertia. To find out the coefficients in terms of moments, so first we need to convert the stress into first force then the moments. So first let's consider the stress into force then let's multiply the change in a small element area surface area with the stress. So we get as sigma into dA. So we get that equation 2 is displayed on your screen. Then we need to find a moment at the point P. So what we know what is mean by moment force into perpendicular distance. So we get that mx is positive and my is negative. So considering that we get the moment above the point P. So we know the perpendicular distance is y along the x. So we get that k1x plus k2y into y of dA. Name as equation 3. Then change in moment about the y axis we get that minus of sigma b into x into dA. So we get negative because the my is going in an anti-clockwise direction. So we can rewrite the equation as minus k1x minus of k2y x into dA. So name as equation 4. 
Now to find the total moment about the x and y, we need to integrate the equation 3 and 4 to get the mx and my. Now what is mx? is integration of sigma b into y into dA and we get that integration of k1x plus k2y into y into dA. Now recalling the second moment of inertia of ixx, iyy and ixy as seen in your screen that integral of y square dA represents ixx, integration of x square dA, iyy and integration of xy into dA represent ixy. Now implement this value in the previous equation and we get that mx equals to k1 ixy plus k2 ixx and we obtain equation 5. Similarly, we have to follow for the my my equals to minus integral of sigma b into x into dA equals to in minus integral k1x plus k2 of y of x into dA. Now we get the equation 6 that is my equals to minus k1 iyy and minus k2 ixy. Now our main motto is to find the bending stress and we know the equation 1 and from there we have to find the coefficient k1 and k2. Now Let's substitute the equation 5 and 6 to obtain the equation 1 that is coefficient 1 and 2. Now let's multiply equation 5 with iyy and equation 6 with ixy. And we get that mx iyy equals to k1 ixy into iyy plus k2 ixx into iyy. And similarly, Equation 6 becomes myixy equals to minus k1 iyy into ixy minus k2 ixx square. Now simply substituting these equations by cancelling of the common terms and we get the equation as mx iyy plus myixy equals to k2 ixx iyy minus k2 ixy whole square. Now we can take the common of k2 and keep the remaining term other side in a common and by rearranging the equations we get the coefficient value k2 as mx iyy plus my ixy by ixx iyy minus ixy square name this equation number equation number seven now similar steps will be followed to obtain the k1 now again taking considering equation 5 and 6 now in equation 5 we will multiply ixy and equation 6 we will multiply ixx now we obtain these two equations as displayed in your screen and cancelling of the common terms and we k that mx ixy plus my ixx equals to k1 ixy ixy minus k1 iyy ixx and again uh, taking this minus k1 common and we get this and rearranging the equations we get as k1 equals to minus mx ixy plus my ixx by 1 ixx iyy minus ixy square obtain the equation number 8 next comes we have obtained the equation that is k1 and k2 coefficients it's very simple recalling the equation 1 that is sigma b equals to k1x plus k2y now we need to substitute the value of k1 and k2 and we get this and rearranging we got that sigma b equals to mx iyy plus my ixx into y minus mx ixy plus my ixx into x divided by ixx iyy minus of ixy whole square and finally we have obtained final bending stress of an unsymmetrical section using k method if you have further inquiry or requested video drop down to our mail wings of arrow at the rate gmail.com don't forget to subscribe for more updates for the time being take care Stay blessed, inspired and fly high.